and welcome to the HSBC UK Women's National Road Series. This is the first of eight rounds of racing to determine the strongest female rider here in the UK. Now, women's cycling has been growing at a tremendous rate and this winter has seen teams develop like never before. It's going to be a great season. This year's HSBC UK National Road Series is made up of eight races across the country. At each round, there are 30 points up for grabs for the winner. The rider with the most points at the end of the series wins the crown. It's as simple as that. Eleanor, obviously world champion on the track and here racing on the road. How's your form coming into this one? Uh, road rides, I don't really know, to be honest. Uh, this is kind of an opener for me to try and test my legs before Yorkshire, which is in a few weeks' time. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to getting stuck into it. Three drops riders racing here today. What's the game plan from you ladies? Um, I can't tell you that. <laughs> I think we're going to try and stay in the front. Um, yeah, we've got three riders, which is good, but yeah, we're quite low on numbers compared to a lot of the other teams. So try and make sure that we've got good representation towards the finish. Best of luck today. Thank, Thank you. you. Emma, brand new start to the Women's Road Series, a brand new race, a new course as well for the ladies this morning. How are you and Bianchi Dharma feeling about this? Good, I think. We had a recce ride yesterday. It was a really grippy course, which is, I guess, good for us. We like a hard race, so... And I reckon this will be a very hard race. No sort of let off, it's either steep down or up. So always on the pedals. And a brand new course today, um, very much a war of attrition from, by all accounts, from the riders who've already recced it. What do you make of the course and of your chances today? Oh, I think it's epic. We went around the uh, course yesterday, there's flags everywhere. I thought like I was riding toward Yorkshire. But um, yeah, no, it's definitely going to be a hard one today. But yeah, again, the standards going up, so the race courses need to go up. So yeah, it's going to be good. Best of luck. Thank you. Uh, Joss, by all accounts, you've been going quite well over the winter and in some of the early road races this season. How is your form coming into this first race of the new Women's Road Series? Uh, hopefully it's going to be good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, testing it out a couple of weeks ago at uh, Cape and Ray was good uh, just to see sort of what state you're in. You kind of had a winter of training and then, yeah, not really sure what it's going to be like, especially after missing previous season really but um yeah seem to be going okay but this course will definitely put it to the test yeah it's a hilly attritional course how much does that suit you as a rider i don't know we shall see <laughs> um hopefully hopefully it's good but um what's interesting is you know it's it's one thing to just go out and you know hit one hill hard but to keep doing it repeatedly repeatedly like throughout the day or throughout the the race is going to be it's going to be really hard it's definitely going to be attritional and team out in full force as well I've oh, got a good team today, yeah, really strong. There's some really strong girls, so there's going to be plenty of people on Fusion to, to watch today. Best of luck to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Brand new race for the start of the Women's National Road Series. How important is this series to both developing new talent and seeing established stars like yourself out on the British roads? Well, it's great to have a, a new race on the on the calendar and to start us off for the year. So everyone's excited about that. And this race, uh, this series is really important to help people have that leg up into European racing. And the, the courses are getting longer. I think we have about 112k today. Um, and when we come to Tour de Yorkshire in a few weeks' time, that's two stages of 132 kilometres. So you can still see the, the jump that people have to make when they're making that um, you know, step up into UCI Peloton, but it's great to have such a hard course and um, to really test the legs. Best of luck today, Sarah. Thank you. Hayley, here we are lining up to roll out before the start of the first race of the series. How are you feeling ahead of 2019? Yeah, I'm feeling really good about this season. Um, I had a really solid winter, then unfortunately got a bit ill. I had a respiratory infection, which was undiagnosed for about a month. Um, so I'm kind of coming back into fitness, but uh, it's a long season. So, you know, even if I'm not kind of flying now, then it, that's fine. But I'm really excited to to be doing this race. I'm really glad the organisers put on a women's race. It's a hard course, um, so it should be a really good ride today. Best of luck to you. This is the first time we've seen a women's race at Gisborough, so the riders don't know what to expect from a tough but fair course. The market town of Gisborough in the northeast of England, regarded as the gateway to the North York Moors, plays host to the third edition of the East Cleveland Klondike. Starting in Gisborough, the race also takes in the 11 villages that make up East Cleveland, as well as the small seaside town of Saltland-by-the-Sea, just down the coast from Redcar. Saltburn's most recognisable feature, aside from the pier and ice cream stands, is the challenging climb of Saltburn Bank. With two hairpin corners and a maximum gradient of 25%, 
It certainly is a favourite for local cyclists, and the four ascents of this climb always proves influential on the race. Well known in the area for its weekly open air markets, Gisborough also attracts visitors from all over the world to the ruins of Gisborough Priory, which this year celebrates its 900th year since it was built in 1119. An excellent example of early Gothic architecture, it remains a symbol of the town. Today, the riders face 69 miles. The Peloton race a large circuit that takes in Broughton, a climb away from the sea in Saltburn, Skelton in Cleveland, Boosbeck and Kilton Thorpe. They cover this twice before a very fast run back to Gisborough for the race finish in the town centre. Well, the scene is set. Let's see what happens out on the road with our commentators, Hannah Walker and first, Rebecca Charlton. Well, plenty of new team colours on show as we open the HSBC UK National Women's Road Series with the East Cleveland Klondike Grand Prix. Alongside me in commentary today is Hannah Walker. And it's fair to say this series really tests every element of the peloton, but this is a particularly tough one to start with. Yeah, it's a, a new race on the calendar. It's never been done before by the women. So um, I think, you know, the the ladies are very, very excited about the, the prospect of the race is getting a lot harder. And, you know, as the standard uh, goes up each year, the courses are getting harder each year, which, you know, I think is fantastic to see. And um, with it being the first major race after the winter, um, I think it's going to be very interesting to see who's on form, who's, you know, got the legs and, uh, you know, who are the riders to watch out for for the, the uh, season coming up. Well, it's Sarah King of Bianchi Dharma that has broken clear of the main peloton on this tough, tough course. And just speaking to the riders before the race today and, and hearing that element of how tough and, and how long this course is, it's actually perfect preparation for things like Yorkshire that we perhaps haven't had in the past. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's great preparation. And, you know, these teams will be using this race, um, you know, notably Brother UK to Fossey and uh, Story and Drops. They'll be using this race as, uh, as prep for it. But nonetheless, you know, this is a race that these teams are going to be wanting to go out and, and take the victory today. Um, you know, especially Bianchi Dharma. This uh, type of course suits this team very, very well. They've got, um, you know, some great climbers on their squad, uh, notably Emma Cockcroft and, you know, Sarah, Sarah King making the breakaway today. So she'll be hoping to get maybe a couple more riders jump across to her. Yeah, I was going to say, what, what's going through her mind now? Because she's got that clear gap. We're not seeing her look back, actually. Incredibly smooth. Just see that technique she's got. Well, as she glances over her shoulder, is she hoping that they, they bridge across? Yeah, you can just see a couple of the riders uh, in, in the background. There's around five, six riders there. She'll be hoping that they'll get across to her um, and, you know, they can work well uh, together. She just takes a little glance. You know, she'll hope that maybe one, one teammate might be in there as well. Looks to me like that is Joe Timley perhaps bridging across there. So we've got about four or five riders, but we keep talking about how attritional this course is, and you can just see the gradient here. And again, you don't always see just how steep this is on the TV screens, but it's a real tough one. Yeah, this uh, camera angle gives, you know, just off how steep this climb is as we go into the first Queen of the Mountains there. A big battle for the uh, Campionens Fellow Performance Team and uh, Brother UK Fusion Road Team. Yeah, that was Jocelyn Loudon who crossed the line first on that QOM and she's Brother UK Fusion RT. It's probably a good point to talk about some of these team colours I mentioned because we're picking out riders here in quite a different strip to last year. Yeah, you could just see Jocelyn Loudon, their team... Um, was formerly racing in red, so they're, they're now racing in uh, this royal blue with the, the multicolored stripes on, on the shoulders. Then we also have Brother UK to Fossey, powered by Onform. Uh, they're racing in the pink, uh, gray, white, and a little bit of black jersey. You can just see actually one of the riders uh, just coming across, so you'll get a glimpse of that. Whereas, you know, Jaden Weltite, um, Viva Lavello, their kit has actually remained the same, so we're familiar with them. Yeah, and it's Christina Vijak here who has broken away and we've got a rider chasing across to her. It looks like they've got about 15 seconds on that chasing peloton there, which looks to be calming back there a little bit. But um, they'll be hoping to join up as a duo, I'm sure. Yeah, just looks like 
uh, the rider Leah Dixon, the Welsh rider, coming across. Very strong uh, rider. She had some great results uh, recently in e-racing. Um, but yeah, these this is a perfect scenario. These two riders get together, work well together. They've both got strength in numbers back in the peloton. So, you know, their teams aren't going to be chasing them down. If they work together, work strongly and, you know, take turns on the front uh, equally and, you know, hopefully they can extend their lead. Absolutely, and this is a duo, as we know, who can work very well together as the peloton look to be closing in now. But you talked about those strength in numbers. We've got some teams that are a little bit more depleted today, but interestingly, you mentioned e-racing there. Leah Dixon has had a lot of sort of racing in her legs in that aspect, but in the field today, we've also got the likes of Eleanor Barker, MBE of Drops, who's, of course, Olympic and world champion on the track, and Emily Nelson's in there for RST Cycle Division Racing Team too. So a lot of people skipping over those disciplines into the road opener. Yeah, I'm you know I'm looking forward to seeing how um, Eleanor Barker, MBE um, of Drops, will go this year on, on the road. You know she's had a very very strong track season. You know j just over uh, six weeks ago took a world title in the scratch race. So um, you know she should still have a little bit of form. She's probably have a, had a bit of time off to rest and recover, but you know she's a strong rider. And um, you know although Drops are only here today with three riders. Uh, Megan Barker, the sister of Eleanor, and Anna Christian. You know, they're all very good riders who have a lot of experience on the international scene. Yes, yeah, such an experienced field today, and it really is star studded as well with people coming out for this early season opener. As we see Ellen McDermott now take to the front, we've had so many different riders attack, just showing the strength and depth of how many people that can actually take the win today. But time now for a quick break. <laughs> Well, it's the familiar sight of Just Loudon on the front of the peloton, driving that pace yet again. And she is such a hill climb specialist, isn't she? She'll be absolutely reveling in a course like this. Yeah, she's uh, got such prowess on these hills and she's just so strong. You can see the riders in her wheel, um, you know, the rider there from Campiness Fellow uh, Performance, just so struggling. She's always riding away from this peloton and it's just she's just got raw strength. She is a former hill climb champion, though, so I think we can just see a uh, little smile there from <laughs> Joss Loudon. She's loving it. I'm not sure if that was a smile or a grimace, but actually with form like that, pushing over the top, I'd definitely be smiling. But it's really pivotal for her now, isn't it? Because she knows that she's got that little bit of a gap. She's put that distance in by keeping the pressure on. Yeah, this is the key part of the race now. You just see there's a split in the peloton. There's around eight to nine riders got a gap on that peloton and you know they just need to get organized get themselves together and just work well you know t start taking turns start going through as we as we say in uh, cycling and what is the ideal scenario for Jocelyn Loudon now because she's looking back you can see her giving a bit of a shout a bit of communication because she knows that there is that bigger gap forming behind that front group the ideal scenario for Joss is actually just carry on riding on the front like she is doing. She has a teammate in this group with her, um, so it's perfect. You know, the two can bounce off each other and work out a tactic going um, into the finish should they stay away. Brother UK to Fossey, powered by Onform, also have three riders in this group. So this is a dangerous move uh, for the, the riders who have missed it in the peloton. They need to start thinking about trying to get across. Yeah, and of course, that is the team with the Tefosi on their chest and the pink sleeve with the grey and white, just spotting those new team strips as we come into this season opener. But they do have the strength in numbers. And in there as well is Anna Henderson, who was second overall last year and is the current national circuit race champion. But we are watching Just Loudon as we were saying right away she just rides the race from the front she doesn't need to attack from behind or you know kind of surprise the riders she just puts the pressure down and rides everyone off her wheel it's it's mightily impressive it certainly is so it was 2017 that she was the british national hill climb champion and you can see as that gradient ramps up she's just got that familiar pedaling style just such smoothness and you don't see her looking back twitching the body around she just puts her head down and knows she can get that gap yeah you can just see with her cadence as well she's got a great rhythm and she's just putting all the power through the pedals which you know essentially makes her move forward faster so yeah she's got a great style on the bike and I think that confidence shows when she knows she's got not only the nous but that power on the climbs that, yes, it's great if she can form a front group with allies, but she can do it alone. 
Yeah, she's strong enough too, but you know, it'll be a little welcome now that uh, Anna Henderson uh, is coming across to her. If these two riders get away and work well together, this you know, will be dangerous. You know, Joss Loudon got raw power, Anna Henderson, you know, a real fighter and, you know, a great descender. So um, the teams that have missed it, you know, Drops and uh, Torelli are sure they really need to start thinking about getting across to this group now. Yeah, as you say there, Hannah, a very dangerous duo to let get away. And Anna Henderson will have an eye on every key move out on the road, won't she? And she's just sat there with the team support. And now she's decided this is the danger move. I'm going with it. Yeah, you can just see Joss uh, look round, wanting Anna to come through. But, you know, maybe that little effort from Anna, she's suffering a little bit. She just needs to rest and recover on the wheel of Joss Loudon, get her breath back, get her back into, you know, into the rhythm of it. And uh, once the riders start sharing the workload, you know, you, you prob we'll probably see their uh, gap increase. Yeah, so Anna Henderson, as you say, making that injection of pace to get across to Joss Loudon. And what's interesting with Henderson as a rider is she can win in so many different scenarios. We see a course like today with that pure climbing technique so required, but also she's a crit specialist as well. We've seen her take the national title there last year, but it really doesn't seem to phase her whatever the scenario she'll, she'll be out front. Yeah, she just takes it all by the scruff of the neck you know she we've seen her win from breakaways from bunch sprints you know on on hill climbs as well you know top, hilltop finishes so she's you know a key asset to the team and she's one to watch by all the other riders as well so um yeah she can just do it all she really can as we just see the rain falling down now and they're coming on to this quite exposed coastal strip how much is the wind going to affect things here running into this finish we can just see on this stretch here it was a crosswind and as they turn left now and start to climb um, they'll have a tailwind which will be much appreciated but with it being a switchback they'll go into headwind and you know do that last uh, the final queen queen of the mountain um with a bit of headwind so you know with two riders, it kind of actually does uh, make it harder for them as opposed to the peloton when, you know, they've got that, that speed and you kind of more riders have got protection within the peloton um, from the wind. But, you know, these riders just taking the climb and, you know, got both got great rhythm. Interestingly, you can see the difference in climbing techniques there. Both quite different riders, although both incredibly strong forces to be reckoned with. But Anna Henderson sort of hitting the apex there, just taking the wider line. And you can just see the pain on Henderson's face because she knows this is the crucial time to not let that distance grow. Yeah, this is the key point in the race where, you know, if Joss is going to get away, this is where she's going to go. And you can just see the gap is already opened up for the, the final queen of the mountain. But, you know, this is make or break now for Anna Henderson. She needs to give it everything, put all, you know, eggs into one basket and just chase her down and get her back across onto the wheel of Jocelyn Loudon. Um, meanwhile, this is where Joss Loudon should be thinking, Right, I know Anna Henderson is really suffering. I know I've got the power and the strength to attack her once more. Um, and a little bit of an injection of pace. This is what will damage Anna Henderson. Yeah, both riders here with so much technical now, knowing exactly what they need to do to get the gap on each other. Because, of course, we know Henderson has got a very hefty sprint on her. Loudon can really climb while smiling, almost looking very, very comfortable. But they are both back together and pulling those turns to work together as a duo. And just looking at that time check at the moment, it looks like they've got around about 1 minute 25 on that chasing group. And this is a scenario we so often see where the peloton are really bearing down on a breakaway, but actually they have got a little bit to play with. Yeah, they've got a little bit of leeway if they want to start looking at each other and a bit of cat and mouse. So um, they do have a little bit of room to look at each other, but you know, by the looks of things, they're both working well together going into this this finish. Um, you know, a little look round there from Jocelyn Loudon. Both riders now will be thinking, how am I going to win this race? What do I need? Uh, and what does it take to beat the other rider? You know, you know that Anna Henderson's got a great sprint. We know that uh, Joss Loudon can time trial very well. So both riders will be thinking, how am I going to beat the other rider now? Uh, one kilometre to go and you <laughs> could see Joss Loudon just having a little look round. I if that was a little flick of the elbow there because keep saying it but she doesn't want to take Henderson to that sprint yeah and I think going into it now you can just see you know Henderson's absolutely glued to Loudon's wheel she's not coming off it she's also not going to come around and do a turn now you're, in, you're into the final one kilometer and you know probably around 500 meters to go now that you know 
Henderson just wants this great lead out from Loudon. So, you know, Loudon probably wants to ease off a little bit, look behind her and kind of force Henderson to come through and, uh, and take the lead. Well, we are well into this closing kilometre of the season opener of the HSBC UK National Women's Road Series. And it is going to come down to Anna Henderson of Brother UK to Fosi Power Boy on form and Jocelyn Loudon of Brother UK Fusion RT as they take this turn now. And it is still Jocelyn Loudon on the front. Yeah, it's all to play for now. You know, if I was Joss, I'd want to kind of attack her into this last corner now. And as we see now, Henderson takes it up. It is Anna Henderson that takes the final turn into this straight. She pounces on Jocelyn Loudon. She looks over her shoulder and she unleashes the raw power that we saw ride her to the 2018 National Circuit Championships. She smiles, she punches the air as she takes the win at the East Cleveland Klondike Grand Prix. She'll be delighted with that. Jocelyn Loudon there in second. Wow, well, what a ride by both riders there. But, um, you know, this is great to see. You know, been in the break for half the race together and quick to congratulate each other. They certainly are. It was brilliant to watch. And it's Brother UK to Fosey Power by on form. Anna Henderson's teammates that are en masse sprinting behind for that third spot on the podium. And it's Leah Dixon that takes that bunch gallop, followed by her teammate Bex Durrell. What a fantastic day for their team. Yeah, pure dominance. Anna, congratulations. That was really quite a race. How do you feel about taking the season opener here today? Oh, it's an epic feeling to win, isn't it? And especially with my teammate in third and fourth and sixth, I think. So, yeah, it was a really good day out for us. Would you sort of say this is a start as you mean to go on? Oh, definitely. I mean, brother to Fosy plan on bossing the National Series this year. And, yeah, we're a force to be reckoned with, I think. Many congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So by virtue of winning the East Cleveland Klondike, Anna Henderson leads the way in the overall individual standings with 30 points. Jocelyn Loudon and Leah Dixon are second and third. And with four riders in the top five, brother UK Tifosi, powered by on form, are on top of the team classification with 80 points. Brother UK Fusion, with two riders in the top 10 are second, Torelia Shaw third. So as the kids' races are happening just behind me, what a day we've had here in Gisborough and a brilliant win for Anna Henderson. The next round is on Sunday the 12th of May. That's the famed Lincoln Grand Prix. Why not join us roadside or tune in for the highlights? To stay in touch with everything from the World in Cycling and the Women's National Road Series, head to britishcycling.org.uk or follow the hashtag National Road Series. See you next time.